International Emergency Service of the Salvation Army. They have asked uh, if I could go and uh, see if I can help the local Salvation Army officers there to to better provide for the refugees in Athens. And specifically, what did that involve? What did you personally have to do while you were there? Uh, well, the, the Salvation Army officers who are based in Athens, they were providing uh, food, uh, sandwiches, milk for children, clothing, hygiene, kids for mothers, for babies. And we just wanted to kind of up our game and, and serve and, and give a little more, offer a bit more. Uh, the Salvation Army doesn't have a clear mandate as such, like for example, the doctors of the world, they, you know, they have a very clear mandate to provide healthcare. But for us, we as Salvation Army normally try to fill the gaps, see where there is any gaps in the, in the provision of care and we try to do that. And, and what we felt in Athens was uh, as the winter was kicking in now that we needed to provide for the refugees to to be better equipped to face the winter as they were continuing their journey up into northern Europe. I want to ask you where you feel people were heading in just a moment. Let's find out where they were coming from. Did you have a perception that these refugees, these migrants, we can argue about those definitions, that these travellers were all driven by a certain motive force to come? Were they all coming from one country or were they a spread? Well, uh, if, if we're asking about what drives them, I would say, to, you know, the way I, I feel about it is it's desperation because no one would leave their home, their family, their loved ones, their jobs to just travel to a far country, not unless they're desperate, unless there is a, there is a reason why, especially coming to Greece, crossing the, the Aegean Sea, it, it can be a perilous journey. And I mean, we've seen it on our on our TV screens, how people have lost their lives. And so people wouldn't just take the chance of doing something like this unless they were desperate. And as where they're coming from, according to statistics from the UN, 49 point something percent come from Syria, 20 odd percent come from Afghanistan, and then comes Iraq and then other countries like that. Uh, you say that desperation is the motivator. Some people say in the British press that the motivation is economic migrancy and that people are moving towards something rather than away from something else. I would say that uh, there's probably some who are economically motivated, but I think that's such a minute, minute percentage of the people who are attempting this journey, this great march, as it has been co come to be called. So I don't think that this is what drives them. What drives them is the bombs flying over their heads. You have presumably met people who were trying to get to the United Kingdom. What proportion of people in Greece, let's say, I know it's not a scientific sample, but what yeah. proportion of them were aiming or expressing their aim to come to this country? I must say that in my eight weeks there, I only met one person who said to me they wanted to come to the UK. And this person, the reason why he, he, was, he felt some kind of connection to the UK was that he was uh, a young journalist back in Afghanistan and he worked as an interpreter for the British Army. So once the British Army was gone from Afghanistan, then he was exposed to, to being you know, persecuted by the Taliban, uh, fleeing for his life. And he had to go into hiding and he felt that he needed to find a safe place to build his life. And, and he felt, well, since he, he served with his friends, the British soldiers, he, maybe that's where he belongs, that's where he should come. Had he not received an opportunity to come to the United Kingdom on account of the persecution and his contribution to the British Army? Uh, from what he said, no. Uh, he said that he contacted some of his uh, friends in the military that he knew and, and they told him, if you come into the UK, then it will, it will probably be able to help you. But they did not offer to, for him to, to, to make a way for him to come. Did he have to come off across the IGNC? That's in one what of those he did, books? yes. Uh -huh. Even though he had been working, presumably, at a fairly high level as an interpreter yes. for the British Army. Yes, exactly. That's according to what he said, yeah. Tell us about some of the other people you met when you were working there. Uh, the vast majority of people I met were from Afghanistan because uh, the way it works in, in Athens is uh, Syrians, for example, they, they had only a very small journey to do compared to Afghanis. So they would kind of take, you know, sell their possessions, take, take all their wealth and just come over to Greece and then catch a bus from the port of Piraeus straight 
to the border and then and then onward to northern Europe. But with the Afghanis, because they they had to be smuggled through several borders and have, had to be smuggled through forests and mountains and and you know they had perilous journeys on the way. Because of that, they were not willing to take all the money that they would need to to, to make it, let's say, all the way to Germany. So for this purpose, they they were dependent on their families sending them money on their journey. So Athens was for them a station like this. And and Victoria Square, where the Salvation Army was basing their activities, that's where the Afghanis would come and they would be waiting for a day or two for their family to send the money so that they can continue their journey. Has this changed the way that you feel and you regard the refugee situation, your first-hand experience? Well, my, my experience, I, I would say, what helped me to see above all was that every person on this planet is a precious person. Every person is, it has the same rights that I have. Every person is entitled to safety and security. So I don't see any difference and, and it should make no difference what color or where we were born because we are all God's children. Many people are concerned about the strenuous efforts that people who have traveled across the continent have made to get into the United Kingdom. What's your take on how we should be responding as the United Kingdom to what is commonly called the migrant crisis? Well, I, w I would say that what we need is we need to respond with compassion. Uh, people are people, people are precious. Every person is precious. And it, it's very easy to make assumptions when, you know, all you think about is just numbers. And when we approach this, uh, you know, from kind of borders and national security and things. I think we are missing the point. We need to, to see that human beings, right? we're talking about human beings and every human being is precious, is important. So I think the starting point in this conversation should be the person. And my experience, that's what helped me in some ways was to actually see the person put a face to these migrants, to these refugees. They're, they're people like me, like you. Putting all that together, how does it make you feel in your heart? Are you angry, determined, optimistic, pessimistic, frustrated? I think all of this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. I don't think there is. Yeah, very often I'm frustrated. Very often I'm, I'm hopeful. Very often I'm, I'm just distressed. You know, and yeah. What do you have to do next? Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, as I said, the initiative for me going to Greece was from the Salvation Army's headquarters, from the International Emergency Services, and and the International Emergency Services has a, a very large pool of uh, people that they can draw on to send. So I don't know if they will ask me to go again, but well, if they were to ask me, I would say that I would gladly, gladly go back and, and just help. I know I cannot do much. It's only very little that a person can offer when you're faced with this big humanitarian crisis. You feel, what could I possibly do? What difference could I make? But then if all of us just do a little, I think it will make a difference. Major Harris Yanaros from the Salvation Army and from Gillingham, thank you very much for your insights. Thank you. Thank you, Lambeth. It's 20 past 11 now and Rose has the news. with.